Welcome. Um, this is Tom Hart from Sequential Artist Workshop. We're looking at the Papa Fumito archives at University of Florida. Papa Fumito is a um, cartoonist, illustrator, storyteller, painter out of Kinshasa in the Congo. He was very active in the 90s and 2000s doing zines and other things like that um, and is now painting and traveling and I'm not sure what else but but the UF archives are stuff that are um, date back to the 90s and 2000s. I had the privilege of looking through them um, and getting my paws all over them. You have access to them at that URL here and um, I'll post that in the description as well and you can see that it's laid out with lots of options. Um, you'll see lots of great links. You'll have the ability to zoom in, to download, to take a really close look at some of the things, including lots of images, um, lots of manuscript and early drafts and things like that. And since I've looked at this work in depth, I'm going to take you through my um, uh, understanding of it, which is um, quite ignorant, in fact, because I um, don't speak Lingala, which most of this stuff is in. Um, it, there's usually some, a smattering of French, which I have a tiny, tiny bit of, but not enough. But So what I know is images, and what I've seen, I sort of was able to classify and sort of group together. And then I did what any um, most other people do when they're sort of presented with like new stimuli, new anything, and it's something new on the horizon, something new in their face, something new in their mind. They try and graft it onto older patterns. What do I already know that's like this, you know? So in going through this, I noticed some, some, um, I noticed some categories of, of images. I noticed domesticity, magic, violence, and um, celebrity. And I also noticed a similarity in those categories to Gilbert Hernandez. So I'm going to start by showing you some of the images I saw in the Papa Fumito archives and then, and then compare it to, to Gilbert Hernandez a little and, and encourage you to go to the UF archives. And um, all of the images are not as rough as this one. I sort of show this to show you just how bad some of my screen images are. But anyway, here's some of the domesticity, women sleeping, um, women arguing inside the house. Um, I've been told that these are rival wives, but I'm not really sure. Again, I don't really know what I'm looking at, and so this presentation is an, an attempt to sort of categorize it a little bit and try and just get my, a handle on it. Um, more domesticity. There is, um, you know, these matriarchal women. There is cooking, cooking and cleaning. Um, there's the sort of image of, of the town. Um, more uh, inside the house, rival uh, violence, arguments between women inside the house, etc. Um, magic. So when we talk about magic, there's a lot of it in, in these Fumito archives. Um, this is a, either a real eel fish thing at this woman's bedside, or a sort of sort of magic eel thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, this this. Uh, character is is battling this crocodile which actually you know does happen in real life so maybe it's not magic but there are a lot of magic crocodile and alligator imagery here's lots of monsters um, on the cover of these zines likewise this monster sort of at this woman's bedside and bedside visitations tends to be one of the categories of magic I see a lot in these archives and this woman is consumed completely by the snake notice the Female shoes here and the male shoes here. Are they already? Is the male already gone? I don't know. Um, more bedside visitations. This creature um, is bringing this mask to this woman who is sleeping. I don't know what's going on here. That character um, traveled through the air over the uh, over the rooftops to get to that woman's bedside. Um, more sort of magic imagery. And again, more bedside visitations. Really strange um, to my eyes. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at, but I'm really eager for more people to dive into these archives and provide more context. And that's one reason that Dan and some of the others at UF have made them available. Um, and mermaids 
and this incredibly incredible image is this um, baby being baptized. I don't know what is, what is exactly happening here. Um, and again, more magic. Let's take that cursor off. Um, lots of that. So the last two categories, violence and celebrity, are a little less uh, less pronounced than the domesticity and the magic, but there's definitely some violence happening in some of the comics. Um, and the celebrity, there's a lot of musicians, um, there's a lot of MCs um, and things like that. A lot of politicians as well. Um, and I noticed some of that in Gilbert's work, but that won't be as, as prominent. So Gilbert Hernandez, as um, many American viewers may know, is a um, cartoonist from Southern uh, California, from LA. Um, he's born um, to Mexican American or to Mexican parents. His um, was raised, as I understand it, primarily by his mother and his grandmother, and was told tons and tons of stories um, growing up. And so that's a lot of that stuff comes out in his work. And so what we're going to do is do a little bit of compare and contrast. I'm just going to first show you domesticity in Gilbert Hernandez's work, who I may shorthand as Beto sometimes because that's how he goes by. But there's some domesticity, more domesticity inside the house, the family, um, the women, a little bit of that domestic violence that we saw. The women, the mothers, the daughters. That was in Papa Fumueto's work as well. Bathing, sleeping, bathing. You didn't see much as bathing in the Fumueto papers. The magic is a great example. I think this character's name is Ismira or Casimira. Now I forget. She's holding up this eyeball that she sort of retrieves from this eyeball pot or something. She's holding onto her arm, her the severed arm that she holds onto most of her life, uses as a bludgeon sometimes. Here's some magic sort of fighting. There's Esmira again, or is it Casimir? I think it's Casimir. Um, bludgeoning somebody with that arm of hers. Some more bizarre Beto magic. Beto, there, to find magic in Beto's work is actually really easy, and, and uh, I barely scratched the surface. This is a stigmata convention. This character is merely speaking in tongues. It's the stima, stigmata children is actually the magic part in this panel, but it's a pretty striking panel nonetheless. Um, and there's um, the matriarchs that I mentioned, and then the, the magic arm. Violence, you'll see a lot of in Gilbert's work, a lot of violence, but in Gilbert's work, you see way more um, male violence than you do in Papa Fumueto's work, where you mostly see a lot of female violence. Um, tons of violent work in Gilbert's work. Some domestic, like this instance, really famous scene. Um, and a uh, quick mention, as we're talking about celebrity, Gilbert was one of the first people to bring Frida Kahlo into public consciousness, you know, in, in, the, in a big way, in the late 80s, maybe even mid 80s. Um, anyway, so let's, a little bit of compare and contrast, just looking at particular panels and how, how there's some cool similarities. Um, this town, village scene, here's the town, or village scene, um, the person coming into the town, same thing, a little bit of the same thing. Um, there we go again. The kids running through the town. There's the kids sort of just marching through the town. Um, fancy woman comes to the town here in Papa Fumueto's work. Here's a fancy woman in town um, in Gilbert's work. Here's a fancy woman coming to the town in Gilbert's work reaction scene from the crowd reaction scene from the crowd kids in this example from gilbert's work i'm um, not sure what this particular ritual is and i think it might be pretty out of context but it reminded me of this sort of ritual just a party scene in the middle of the town in the socolo um, matriarchs feature really prominently in both both work. Um, there's Luba, sort of one of the town matriarchs, if not the ma town matriarch. There she is 20, 30 years prior to that last shot. Um, of course, right, the violence between 
um, women in town there in Gilbert's work, there in Papa's work, there in Gilbert's work. The sort of fancy um, woman character as main character, Luba, this woman, very stylish, the characters in Gilbert's comics, stylish. Similar things happening in the presentation. Sometimes even in the faces. Some sleeping again. Um, magic and sleeping in Gilbert's work. We talked about um, bedside visitations. Here's a pregnancy visitation. This pregnancy um, happening through magic here in Gilbert's work. Another one here. This character has this sort of alien-shaped head. It reminded me of this scene in Gilbert Hernandez. It's Albert, actually Gilbert, I think, doing Jaime's characters. But again, pregnancy. This woman, we saw this shot before with this magic creature at the woman's bedside. Different shot, but um, similar snake near the genitals at the bedside, sort of winged snake, it's very same, similar similar um, looking creature. Um, this little homunculus and th these little homunculi there. Shots in the graveyard, shots in the graveyard, shots of statues, oops, statues. Um, Papa would put himself in, in the work sometimes as Gilbert often does, that's Gilbert and his wife in the bottom right. It's Gilbert as the main character, surrounded by his, char his characters in the background. There's Gilbert drawing his, or photographing his brother. Um, Here's a scene of the town is battling this lizard outbreak. Not really sure what's going on. Here this town is battling this monkey outbreak with the same sort of um, imperativeness, I guess is the word. And the same sort of final outcome, wrapping them up all in bags, getting them all in the bags. Sometimes... Um, Papa and Gilbert will both fall into, or sort of head into expressionism in this type of mark making. You see that in Gilbert all the time too. This is just one example. Um, and finally, just a sort of evening shot of the village. You see that a lot in Gilbert as well. Um, and that's sort of the end of the sort of comparisons. But so I want to dial it back though and head back to um, what these archives are and who I am in looking at them. I'm just, um, I'm just an ignorant bystander <laughs> like this American in Palomar, Gilbert's story about this photographer who comes into, um, you know, this town and treats it like something it's not. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at when I'm looking at the, the Fumuito archives. And um, as I said, the, the um, archives are there and now digitized and now um, being translated to some degree. They're also being incorporated with some um, archives of the actual zines in f complete runs. Um, and they're being translated from the Lingala and from the French, but mostly from the Lingala. And so as, and also um, Papa Hems, Fumuito himself has been involved with to some degree and his, his um, interviews are being transcribed as well. So right now in er, uh, mid 2022, to me, it's this just wonderful sort of like display of imagery and slices of narrative. Um, but I'm hoping that as soon as this gets posted, it's out of date and that there's more context and more speaking with Papa Fumueto and more of the Lingala translated and more of the zines incorporated into these archives. And um, for anyone who's interested in um, underground work, 
work that is, um, you know, in some ways, Fumito and I are from the same generation. We created our own work in the 90s. We, we distributed our own work in the 90s and 2000s. We were excited to sort of tell the world about um, what our universe was like. And that's what excites me here. And uh, the, the more context we can get, the more we can sort of share cultures and sort of understand each other. And that's what's really exciting to me. So again, go to that, um, go to that early, because um, I, <laughs> I don't know the internet so well, I don't know the, the, how to get back to it, but uh, it, it'll be in the, in the previous, um, previous, uh, so oh, that ain't it. Oh, it is it. There we go. There's the URL for the Papa Fumuito papers, and you can certainly search for it. And I'll make sure that in the description you'll find lots of lots of links. And I want to thank Dan, who um, who runs it, and Nancy Hunt, who brought it here. And uh, thank you for taking a look and for spreading um, spreading the sort of like uh, connections that we're all trying to make through through our own cultures here. Um, thanks so much, and and uh, happy digging in. <laughs>